In our Capuchin Franciscan history of our order, there always has been a great devotion, particularly to the Virgin Martyrs. Whenever you go to visit one of our ancient Capuchin friars built anywhere within the first 300 years of their reform, you'll always see the beautiful altar, then there's the two doors on the sides, uh, next to the altar from which the brothers will come in to say, go for Mass and go back to their chapel on the other side of the wall to pray the Divine Office. But right above the doors normally, there's pictures, paintings, of the Virgin Martyrs. They had such a great devotion to the Virgin Martyrs because the Virgin Martyrs were these beautiful women who were innocent, who were pure, and so there was that sense of seeking purity and innocence that each of us in our lives need to be seeking that true purity. And why seek purity? Well, our Lord said, only the pure of heart will see God. Less about the pure of heart, they will see God. And so there was that thirsting, that desire for true purity so that they could see God. But also, they were also martyrs, not just in the purity of their virginity, but they were, they were, these women were also martyrs. They gave their lives for Christ. They would rather die than give up their purity. Rather death than give up their purity. Why? Because they knew that if they died in their purity, they would see God. And so this was part of the tradition of our Franciscan Capuchin spirituality, was to paint the pictures of these virgin martyrs to remember that at all costs to maintain purity, at all costs to be faithful, no matter what they take from you, they can never take from you what's already been given. They can't take what's already been given. If we've given ourselves to Christ, they can't take what's already been given to Christ. You know, in the prior to the Second Vatican Council, we have the beautiful tradition of Latin Mass, sometimes called the Mass of the Ages, sometimes called the Trinity Mass, but it's far older than the Council of Trent, right? And it grew over the years. And unfortunately, after the Council, uh, what was his name, Benini, whatever, the Cardinal's name, who wrote, who redid the Mass, he invented uh, Eucharistic Prayer 2, Eucharistic Prayer 3, Eucharistic Prayer 4, and then a whole bunch of other Eucharistic Prayers were invented. Uh, supposedly there were ancient masses and they weren't. Uh, the guy was such a shyster that he actually wrote Eucharistic Prayer 2 and 3 in a coffee shop on napkins. Like he didn't have much uh, faith himself and actually he was investigated by Pope Paul VI and he was found to be a mason. Uh, and they sent him off to uh, go be a cardinal in Iraq. <laughs> Iraq in charge of like 30,000 Christians. It was the size of a small parish. <laughs> so that's it. That was his because they found out. Too. Anyway, uh, this is the sad part about bringing those up, and then you shorten it, a lot of priests will use Eucharistic Prayer 2 because it's so fast. Yeah. You can get through it in seconds, right? And Eucharistic Prayer 3 is a little bit longer, a little bit nicer, but all of the Eucharistic Prayers written after the Second Vatican Council uh, dropped one of some of the most important parts of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Now, they're all still valid because the words of consecration are there, of this is my body, this is the child's my blood, so they're valid masses, but they're just a little bit lacking, or they're a lot lacking, in the beautiful prayers of the Roman canon, which has been the, the, the mass for centuries, right? Now, Eucharistic Prayer 1 is the translation that we have, which you see that I use when I did Novus Ordo, uh, that's the one that's the direct translation, or mostly the translation from the Old, but there's some things that got dropped in there, unfortunately, <laughs> but, uh, but there's a very beautiful part of it, I mean, the whole thing's part, beautiful. But after consecration, uh, after the priest prays and so forth about various things, he prays for the dead, and then he prays to us also, your servants, who those sinners, and that's when the priest bangs his chest, right, so he's asking the Lord for us, who are ser his servants, who are sinners, the priest pounds his chest, it says, and that says right, even the new mass, it says, and with hands extended, he continues, well, he, he strikes his breast with his right hand, saying, so we're supposed to do this at that point. <laughs> right? That's what the red tells me to do. Right? And it says, we sinners who hope in his abundant mercies, right? we're hoping in God's mercy, we, grit, and we ask him, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. In the canon of the mass, uh, Roman canon, we're asking to be to share in the martyrdom. We ask you to share in martyrdom. We're asking Lord for that gift. That we have some share in that martyrdom. Whether that be we die for Christ, or whether that we're able to offer our sufferings and penances as a form of martyrdom, as an act of love. We're asking for that. We're asking the Lord to graciously grant it. And then we list. 
John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas. Right? We know who these people are. And then unfortunately, in the Novus Ordo, they put in parentheses the rest of these martyrs, like you can do them or not do them. Now, the Roman can, the old mass, we always did them. It was always hard to mention these people. Why? Because we're not only we're remembering them because of what they gave us. And what's sad about some of those who are uh, more leftists in the church, who promote women and all this other stuff, women, all this other stuff, all the feminists drop this all the time. They never like to say it, which is a shame, because we have a list here of the beautiful Holy Virgin Martyrs. Women who died for Christ. They're mentioned directly in the Mass, Eucharistic Prayer 1. And so it goes on to say with John the Baptist, Stephen Matthias, then it goes on in the parentheses, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, and then it moves to Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia. These beautiful lists of these young women who gave their lives for Christ, most of them virgin martyrs, who would rather die than betray their God, rather die than lose their purity. And mentioned among here is the saint we celebrate today, Saint Lucy, who would rather die than give up her virginity, rather die than betray what she had given to the Lord, rather die than lose that which was given to God. She was going to cling because she wanted that purity. She wanted to see God. Now it's interesting is because her eyes and part of her torture were plucked out. Mm -hmm. The man was in love with her, loved her eyes, and so she gave him her eyes. <laughs> right? Because they were already given to God. Her eyes were given to God. Her body was given to God. Her soul was given to God. Her whole self was already given to God before someone decided that she should be given to this body. She'd rather die they give to someone else what was given to God. And these beautiful women were, some of them just little things. <laughs> they were just 12 years old, some little girl, who had such courage, such faith, such strength, such will. They were amazing. And yet we dropped them out of the canon. Eucharistic Prayer 2 doesn't even mention them. Eucharistic Prayer doesn't mention them. And then Eucharistic, the new Eucharistic Prayer 1, to how they read, they put in parentheses. That's why I bring them, but it's, Mention them in Mass because they're to give us inspiration. We're asking to share in their fellowship with them. We're asking that we be given a share of their strength, their courage, their perseverance, a share of their willingness to die rather than betray our God, rather than die than give to someone else what belongs to God Himself. These beautiful, holy women who so gave everything to the Lord, so freely and without fear. You know, uh, amazing, these young women. One of them had her breast cut off and they're torturing her. Another one was uh, tied to the wheel and, and burnt. You know, Cecilia, her throat cut. And she lied dying with her throat slashed. And she sang best she could with her throat slashed as she lied dying. And with her fingers proclaiming that the two persons of one nature, one, one, uh, God's one person, two natures. Incredible with her fingers, she's proclaiming God in her death. These holy, good women. And at the end of that part of that mass, of the Mass there, we ask, after naming these female martyrs, we say, Admit us, we beseech you, into that company. Admit us into that company. Well, if you're going to get admitted to the company of the martyrs, you've got to be a martyr. <laughs> We're asking the Lord to be admitted into the company of martyrs. Lord, let me die for you. Let me be martyred for you. Let me give my life for you. We're asking that in the Mass to be admitted among the company of martyrs. Let me be with John the Baptist who was beheaded. Let me be with Stephen who was stoned. Let me be with, with, with Ignatius who was thrown to the lions and ground up. Let me be with these martyrs who so lovingly gave their lives for love of you. These are the white robed martyrs heaven who washed their robes in the blood of Rather die, and we're asking to be admitted into their company. And we tell the Lord, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. <laughs> Don't look upon my merits, because I'm totally no, not, not anything I've done, but by, but by your love, by your mercy, give me this grace. We're asking for this grace in every Mass. We ask for this. You know, this is why when we see the country turning against God, and now we have this, you know, this marriage bill that. 
thanks be to God, right now to persecute uh, Christians who refuse to do gay marriages, but that is coming. It's going to happen. Eventually, we're going to ignore that. They're going to come for us. You know, uh, we should be surprised when this stuff happens in the world. The Lord told us it would happen, um, but we should be fearful and, oh no, the persecution's coming. They're going to kill all the Christians. Bring it on. It's already been given. My life has already been given. Our lives have already been given. We were baptized into Christ Jesus. We were already given. When you were baptized, the priest put his hand on your head with the sign of the cross in your forehead and said, I claim you for Christ. You've already been claimed. So we have nothing to fear with this. Just thinking quickly to a, a bishop in Africa who had um, a couple of his priests were kidnapped. And they threatened to kill the priests. And they called the bishop and asked for release and money for them, and uh, well, they're going to kill the priest. And the bishop said, they already gave their lives to Christ. Complete their sacrifice and take their lives and allow them to offer themselves to the Lord and finish what they began. And he got the phone. They were released. They didn't know what to do. <laughs> the bishop was like, take them. They were already given. Now, I'm sure these guys had a few choice words with the bishop when they got home. <laughs> but, not for them. You know, but the bishop's faith was beautiful. They had already laid down the life. They already laid before the altar of God on the floor, face to the ground, and already consecrated themselves to the Lord. He just said, complete their sacrifice. Complete their offering. You know? When we give ourselves to the Lord, and if we have been given the grace to receive martyrdom, blessed be God. It's a completion of what was done the day that water was poured over our head at baptism when we were given over to the Lord. It's just a beautiful act of proclaiming Christ that nothing comes between me and him. Nothing. Why would Isaac Job allow his fingers to be chewed off? Because they were already given to God. Right? Why did St. Celia allow her throat to be slashed? Well, her voice was already given to God. Right? Their bodies were already given to God. So when they threw them on the pyres and burned them alive and so forth, they were already given to God. Maximilian Colby thrown into the starvation bunker. He was already given to God. So may the Lord receive us and receive the sacrifice of ourselves. May we be given that grace to share in the saints. As we pray today, as we hope in God's abundant mercies, may He graciously grant us a share and fellowship with the apostles and martyrs. We pray that God will admit us into their company, that He won't weigh our merits, that he'll grant us his pardon through Christ our Lord. May God bless you and Mary keep you.